Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the last in our series of professional development workshops. My name is Jana Saylor, and I am the founder and artistic director of the Allegra Chamber Orchestra, and I'm currently coming to you from the unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. I'm here in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. I'm on day five of a 14-day quarantine. <laughs> God, my, uh, you can follow my adventures on Conductor in Quarantine <laughs> on Facebook if you wish. And uh, we're delighted to have all of you here. Um, uh, this is uh, presented as part of the Electric Chamber Orchestra's um, com Composer Incubator project. And uh, this is to uh, supplement the uh, six mentees, uh, their experience working one on one with um, experienced composition mentors. And so I'm just going to um, get them to say hi if they like. Uh, we have Maria Alice Conrad from Edmonton. Hello. And we have Holly Winter in uh, Newfoundland, I'm a little bit closer to you these days. <laughs> we have uh, Maria Eduarda Mendez Martins from Victoria. Hello. Hi. Um, let's see, I thought I saw Sasha and Ashley. Yes, they're just on another page. So we have uh, Sasha Ko uh, from Vancouver, Ashley Seward, hey. also Vancouver. And we have Palas Athena Laredo, also in, in Vancouver. So welcome, everyone. So glad to see you. And we have Rodney Sharman as well here, and he's one of our esteemed mentors. So um, I am super stoked about uh, this workshop um, with the phenomenal Mark Takeshi McGregor, um, who uh, is, is no stranger to us in the uh, you know, Vancouver music and new music world. Um, he's a phenomenal flautist and innovator and um, entrepreneur in the, and, and educator. What, and what else are you? Artist, visual artist, fantastic visual artist. So. Uh, um, so check him out. Go go stalk him after this. Um, he has fantastic um, info to share. I thought this would be a good way to round out our sessions together because um, we're we're all our our own um, you know entrepreneurial um, <laughs> drivers in this uh, strange uh, business world, and there's no one that knows our work or will promote our work as much as we will, even if you do at some point have an agent or a, or a manager. So um, Mark will have some really fantastic um, uh, tips and uh, mindsets and tools for you uh, as we go through this, uh, this hour together. So without uh, further ado, please welcome Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Jana. Uh, yeah, my name is Mark. Uh, I live and work on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, which includes the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the tsleil also known as Vancouver. And um, I'm a flutist, and um, I do, as, as Jana mentioned, I, 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 do a, I wear a lot of hats as that. I, uh, I perform with orchestras. I've performed as principal flute with the Vancouver Symphony, with the Victoria Symphony. Um, but I would say my main focus, uh, the main focus of my career has been contemporary, new, and experimental music. And I think one of the most exciting things that I do is actually work with composers. And one of the neat, really wonderful, wonderful things that, uh, that is part of this process is actually getting to know new voices and new composers and find out what new narratives and finding out what people are doing and uh, what, what, are, what are the aesthetic priorities and, and things like that. So um, I wanted to talk today about musicians as being entrepreneurs. Uh, I think it's sort of like a, it's a very sort of florid way of describing sort of what we do. We, we are, as Jenna mentioned, we are our own uh, boss uh, to a large degree. And how we present ourselves uh, to the public and online is obviously gonna have an impact on you know who, who commissions us, who hires us, uh, who plays our music. So I'm gonna be focusing today mostly on um, on, on sort of, I, I guess, sort of, well, sort of internet-based uh, resources. And I've started teaching a course this year at the Vancouver Academy of Music, and it's actually called Musicians as Entrepreneurs. And it's been, uh, it's actually been very interesting in the context of the pandemic because a lot of this has changed. Uh, and a lot of what we do has been, uh, ha has been compromised. So um, 
what I would want to talk, talk about today is how we develop our web presence, because I think right now in our present state, I think the most important, like the, it's, it's the most important resource that we have right now as musicians. So um, I'm going to sort of break it down into sort of, uh, sort of vaguely uh, organized sections. We're going to talk about websites. Uh, we're going to talk about biographies. We're going to talk about photos. And we're going to talk a little bit about social media. OK, so um, first of all, I did a little bit of research on all of you, on the six composers that are uh, that are uh, involved in this project. Um, I internet stalked you and um, it was I was actually really it was it was really interesting to see what people have, uh, like what, what, what comes up on searches and things like that. And I, I actually I do want to spend the last por uh, portion of today maybe just talking about that. So if unless there's. Um, unless there's like vociferous objection, I would like to actually talk about um, sort of internet resources that we have, uh, developing and maintaining those resources, looking at some websites uh, of composers who of uh, things that work really well, maybe a couple things that don't work very well. Uh, and then if it's okay with y'all, I wouldn't mind going through each uh, of the six composers and just sort of seeing what comes up and sort of just talking a little bit about um, web presence, what we might consider developing uh, and what, you know, uh, you know, th things to, and possibly things to avoid. So um, first of all, so just a little bit about websites. First of all, please have one. Uh, I think this is actually a really important thing uh, for it's, especially for a composer, I think it's really something that is a home base, okay? Um, it's a place where you can, I mean, we can have presences on Facebook, we can have presences on, on, on SoundCloud, YouTube, but a website is a way that sort of, it brings it all together and makes it accessible. So I know from my experience as someone who performs a lot of contemporary music, who commissions a lot of contemporary music and curates a lot of it, um, the first thing I do when I hear about a composer is I, I, I Google them and I'm looking for, I'm looking for a web page usually. Now, a lot of times composers don't have web, uh, don't have websites, in which case the first thing that'll come up would be a SoundCloud page, which is also really useful, but it does have its, its, its limitations. And I want to talk, I'll talk a little bit, uh, I will talk just a little bit about that today. So, um, sorry, I blanked out for a sec. Okay, just pulled up, just pulled up some notes here. So, um, do, so, I would, if, if you are all here right now, I would say that it would be in your best interests uh, to consider having a website if you don't already have one, okay? Um, they are easier to create and to maintain than you might think. So there's actually free versions of it that you can get out of it, uh, get out there through WordPress. And um, really, if you just sort of keep them, if you keep them, uh, just relatively up to date, and it's, it's a really good thing for people like us uh, to, uh, to to refer to. So, um, I want to just talk about actually what I'm going to do right now is just pull up examples that I found. I've been sort of going through the last few days of websites. I'm just lending in someone named Warner Chan. Is that okay, Jana? Okay. So, I'm just going to share a screen here. Make sure that there's nothing incriminating here. Okay. So I'm just gonna take us on a little tour of some websites that are out there already, okay? And the first one I thought about when I was doing this was Kaya Sariaho because she's, well, first of all, she's one of my favorite composers of all time. And I think what we can really see here is the simplicity of this website, okay? So, um, Back in the day when Georgi Ligeti was still alive, he had maintained his own website. And this was like from like, I don't know what it was. It was like the mid nineties or something, okay? It was just like websites had just begun to appear. And his website was completely insane. It actually had all these uh, video games that you could play. And he had like these little spiders. He had some sort of preoccupation with spiders. You could play these video games with spiders uh, on it. And it was sort of wildly entertaining back in the nineties when the internet was kind of new. These days, I think we're looking for something slightly more streamlined, and I think Sariahu really has uh, has it going on. Okay, so first of all, um, her biography, obviously super up to date, 
And what we have here is you have PDF files that you can actually do, you can actually download. Okay, this is super super helpful um, because what concert presenters are going to be looking for is a biography that they don't necessarily have to like do a cut and paste job of, right? So if you can have your biography available as a PDF as a long, longer version and a shorter version, this is always really, really great, okay? People would even say that if you could have it available as a Word file, that's even more useful because uh, often what people are going to be doing is they're going to be cutting and pasting and they'll be making modifications to your, to your bio for program notes. So they'll be changing it so that it fits within their guidelines or they'll be adding information about, you know, things that are specific to that concert. So if you could have those as downloadable uh, content, that is a fantastic thing. Um, the other thing about Sarayaho is um, her news her her news site is totally up to date. Okay, so like the last thing that was posted is from May tenth, twenty twenty one. It's just uh, four days ago. So now I am pretty sure that Kaya Sarayaho does not do all the updates on her own website. I'm pretty sure she has somebody that does it for her. Okay, so having things up to date as four days ago isn't necess isn't really necessary, but I do think if you're going to have a website with a blog or a website with uh, like, you know, recent events or upcoming events and things like that, do make the effort to keep it uh, somewhat up to date. Like I'd say like a minimum, try and update it maybe three times, three to four times a year, okay? Um, and this way, because we, we, all, we all know an abandoned website when we see one, right? Um, so. I don't know how many times I've come across websites where one of the things you can click on is recent and upcoming events. You click on it's like this page is under construction. I mean, it's gotten to the point now where we really don't even th I don't even think twice about it anymore. I'm just like, oh yeah, someone thought they're going to have a website, like have, have a blog or recent events, and they they're not keeping up with it, right? You know what? If you if you feel like you're a person that really wants to have that sort of uh, that sort of uh, developing presence, and uh, you want to keep a blog, you want to actually, you know, you want to talk about recent events. By all means, do it. Do not feel like you are obliged, though. Um, I think having a website that's simple, that doesn't necessarily have, you know, like a, a, a website with a blog is perfectly fine, and a website without like recent events is also fine, as long as you are keeping, uh, as long as you're keeping your biographical information somewhat up to date. Okay. So. Um, Again, and then when you just sort of scrolling through each page here, you'll notice like the works page is broken down into into genres, which is super helpful for someone like me. Okay, because usually what I'm doing is I am looking for a piece for solo flute, flute electronics, flute with ensemble, these sort of things, right? And if you can break it down like this, it's wonderful. Okay. Uh, she has upcoming concerts, and then as you go further down through the website, what I've noticed is she has something called insights, and then you click on that, and that's where you start. That's where you first start to see, uh, well, a blank content, right? So, um, I think this is probably sort of like this is probably put aside for like um, articles she may have written, or you know, um, but it's not up to date. But it's okay, but because most of, for the most part, this is a super super um, concise and and really good website. There's a gallery. Do, 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 do. Gallery, you know, and you can break it down to portraits, performances, and behind the scenes. So I don't expect anyone here, including myself, to have as, as extensive um, a, a website as, as someone like Sariaho, obviously, because she's you know an international composer. But um, I do like, what I really like about this website is how, um, how well organized it is, how clear it is, and how all the information right here is just, it's, it's so clear what this is, what we're going for, okay? Um, I've realized years ago, I was interested in, in, in sexy websites, like websites with like, you know, lots of like graphics and lots of like, you know, like those splash pages and things like this. And I'm finding now, um, especially as for composers of websites, the thing that I want the most is I want quick and easy access to who you are and what your music sounds like. You know, so I mean, those are the two most important things. You know, and I'd say with Sarayaho's website, it's completely, it's 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 completely transparent. So um, I want to move along here, and I want to show. This is Nicole Lizay's website. Now, Nicole has taken a different approach. Her homepage is deliberately. It's very. It's got a beautiful graphic on it. Um, it's deliberately mysterious. 
And you actually get a lot of information from this uh, with, very, with very little information provided. So um, you can actually see her. She's very dimly represented here in the, in, in the photo. Um, and then you have this TV with the off-air symbol on it, which I don't even know if that even that simply even exists anymore in television. So when I was a child, <laughs> around 2 o'clock in the morning, this was a very common sight on the television as everyone went off-air off uh, uh, for, for the evening. But what this does is it shows uh, Nikki's interest in electronics, and also, and particularly antiquated in electronics. I mean, this actually is something that really sort of summarizes uh, a, lo a lot of her interests and a lot of her aesthetics, okay? Uh, you go to the biography page, uh, a very, very gripping uh, photo right off the bat. So Nikki's actually a very interesting person. She was actually one of these people who for a long time was, um, she had built a career around the fact that she like her 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 image wasn't something that was immediately immediately accessible. Um, it was something like she would always have a lot of grainy photos, a lot of sort of like half photos, uh, or sometimes no photos. And so there's a lot of mystery surrounding who she was, um, and um, that's changed in recent years uh, as as she, her international profile has been has been uh, has been escalating, but. Um, I was thinking the other day about how composers are actually in a very interesting uh, position as far as that goes. Like as performers, um, having sort of clear headshots and having clear action shots of us playing our instruments, this is something that's really uh, sort of like, it's, it's a really important part of who we, of, of, of our identity, especially online. Uh, composers can actually maintain something for a lot more mysterious if they, if they want. Um, Jocelyn Morlock's another composer who does, th does that. Um, she there's I think her official photo on her, on her website is actually her like you know taking a, a picture from on an old analog camera, and so you, like her facial features are actually uh, obscured, um, and there's that sense of mystery and also that sense of playfulness as well. So I just realized there's a pork roast recipe here, so please don't judge me. And if you're a vegetarian, I'm really sorry about that. So uh, moving along here, her works. So again, you know really uh, really cool visuals here and uh, works it's a little bit all over the place but it's it's you know it's everything here is very very clear you know about what what the piece is what it's written for uh, and whether or not it requires electronics and uh, if there's a, um, a recording of it there is an asterisk next to it so um, and as you can see it's quite a, it's 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 an extensive list so this is um, I mean, in my mind, it's not, a, it's not the ideal way to list a, a works thing. My personal preference is something like Sariajos, where it's actually listed by genre, but still really, really uh, super clear and super well laid out. She has a video page. Uh, a lot of her works now have a video component, so this is an important page for her. So um, this is where you can listen to excerpts and uh, complete works of uh, a, lot of her recent a lot of her recent music that has a video component to it. So. Um, if you're familiar with Nikki's music, you know that uh, she has a series of pieces called the Criterion Collection, which is a series of pieces that are inspired by some of her favorite film directors. And so what she's done is she's actually, it's actually really uh, incredible what she's done. She's pillaged footage from these various, uh, from various films and she's uh, worked with them to get, she's uh, got something called Glitch. And so like there's, uh, she plays with the image and the image is coordinated with, uh, with the music that's being, uh, that's being performed. So. Uh, press a press page is actually really fun. So, um, and she has plenty of it. Uh, I personally find that if I mean if you if 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 you have lots of press, having a, a page dedicated to it is a really great thing. Um, otherwise, I tend to take uh, my press uh, uh, like whenever I get press, I tend to incorporate it into my bio. So um, you know you can. At the end of the day, a press is sort of like, I mean, it's more like a vanity page more than anything else because it's not necessarily, like if I'm, I'm probably not going to want to, uh, you know, present somebody's music based on a review from the Sydney Morning Herald. Like I'll probably listen to it and make my own decision, you know? But at the same time, it's very impressive. To have, it's an impressive page to have. And of course, contact page. So, um, which I think is actually good. Uh, you can, when you're creating your own website, you can have uh, you have various options. You have a contact page where you can just sort of like do it through the through the internet or through the website itself, and then they'll send it to uh, to your ad, to to your web address. And that's sort of a safer way of actually doing it than actually just putting your email address on. So 
which now that I think about it, I haven't changed my page. So, <laughs> but um, I would say this is definitely a uh, this is a definitely a step up. Okay, so um, I think there's a lot of really good things in these sites. I'm going to take you into a site now that okay. First, I'm going to preface it by saying that I love this website. Okay, and I also love this musician, and I think that there's a lot of really interesting things here. This is a website though that verges on perhaps slightly too much information. Okay, now it's not a composer, but this is a violinist named Lara St. John. Okay, now everyone, we all love Lara St. John. Okay, the first thing that you get on her page is. Um, a page that redirects you to another website. Okay, so um, she has a, a series, a concert series on called the Atterbury Concert Series, and she goes, if you want more information about that, you can click that, and if you want to just visit the website, you can do that. It's okay. It's fairly clear. Okay, so let's visit the website. So, um, very colorful, very bold, and you really the one the thing I will say about this website is you absolutely get an, an idea of who Lara St. John is uh, when you look at this site. Okay, um, you scroll down, you get quotes. It's a lot of fun, and she's somebody who really, really keeps her website up to date. She's actually been really good throughout the entire pandemic because. Um, Actually, her, her upcoming schedule page is actually really funny because she actually lists it and then she has it crossed out, canceled because of COVID, Can crossed out, canceled because of COVID. And it's sort of like, it, I'm sort of become sort of a, um, I mean, there's, there's an element of, that's, of it that's actually quite amusing, I think. So now the thing with, the thing about this page is there's a lot of, inf there's a lot of information being crammed in here, okay? So you go to her about and instead of getting the bio, you get all sorts of different things. You get her bio, then you get the Atterbury House sessions, you get an, all the different projects that she's been involved in over the years uh, and, and is developing. And you also get one page called Lara's Giant Lizard. So if you're familiar with Lara St. John, you know that she has a pet um, iguana and the iguana gets its own site. So I've just let someone, I just let, let Ashley into the room and she's going to come join us and see a page about a giant iguana. So, um, and check it out. You get the story about Lara St. John's giant lizard. It's actually really entertaining. I totally recommend you uh, you reading it. Um, the lizard helped her quit smoking. I won't uh, reveal how, but you'll have to read the story to find out. So anyways, it's, it's, it's really fun, okay? And it's, it sort of reminds me of this, like the, like, the like, old Ligeti page where you can play video games and things like this. You can sort of get lost in it for a long period of time, but I'm not necessarily gonna get the information that I need very easily, you know? Like when you have these pull down, like in the case of say Sarajevo, where you have the pull down menu that, tell, that breaks all the works down by genre, which is really useful. This is sort of like a pull down menu sort of gone out of control, right? So like, you know, the about page has, we have six options on that. Um, gallery, that's fine, you know. But, um, you know, this I, I find sort of verges on slightly, it, it can verge on slightly too much information. So, anyways, that's just a little bit of a tour that I wanted to take uh, on uh, out there. I think most of you have websites. I mean, I took a little, oh, well, I'll talk about that in a moment, okay? Anyways, just as I want to talk a bit about bios, okay? Um, when you have a bio, I would say for web purposes, try to keep it updated once, uh, at least once a year, okay? And, uh, or when you have something like a major event, a major premiere, uh, you win a major award, really think about having, like, that's a good time to update your site, okay? Having that stuff really up to date is great because um, you will find people won't necessarily ask you for your bios. Sometimes they'll just go straight to your website, copy and paste it. And put it in, okay. So, and I've done this. I've, 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 I'm guilty of doing this, okay. When I'm, when I'm uh, putting together concert programs, uh, because I usually put a concert program together the night before, okay. And I'm not probably not going to have time to actually call people up or email them saying, "Can you send me an updated bio?" Sometimes I'm not organized, not usually, okay. So, um, usually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the website. I'm just going to pull it off there and just circle, you know. I hope this is updated, and I can't tell you how many times I've had my wrist slapped saying, oh my God, that that uh, that bio is seven years old. I'm like, that's the bio on your website. So make an, make an effort to keep those up to date, okay? So uh, 
I think I mentioned before, make sure that you, yeah, do have it in a, download, in a downloadable format. That makes it very helpful for people who are creating concert programs. And also consider having in different lengths. Uh, the Vancouver composer, Jeff Ryan, he's totally revamped his website. It looks very, it's really, really beautiful now. But uh, one thing he did in his old website was you could get different sizes and bios, but he did them like Starbucks uh, coffee cups. So you could get, um, get tall, uh, grande, and venti. You know, and the venti was like, you know, pages and pages and pages. Um, having different lengths is actually a good thing because we often have different size, as concert presenters, we often have different spaces, you know, for what we can present. Um, and if you only have your long bio, chances are, well, if you only have your long bio, we'll either, if we're organized, we'll ask you to send us, send, uh, send us something shorter. And if we're not organized, uh, we'll just take the first paragraph. So, which also says, <laughs> make sure you have all the important stuff in the first paragraph, okay? Um, I learned to, I recently really shortened my bio down. I used to, it's just sort of like, you know, and on September 9th of 1963, I did blah, 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 blah. So I, I used to have something like that. Actually, I wasn't born in 1963, don't listen to me. But um, it used to be sort of extensive, you know? And then one day, uh, a concert presenter who shall remain nameless uh, did a, presented me in, well, a city that shall remain nameless, but, um, and they thought it would be funny to just take the entire bio off my website and just put it into the concert program. And the bio was three and a half pages. Okay. It was a total embarrassment. And also I know this person, I'm fairly close with this person. So we had a good laugh about it. And they're like, did you see what I did? I'm like, oh, I saw what you did. But um, like, seriously, like the next day, the bio went from three and a half pages to one paragraph. Okay. So, um, so. I mean, by all means, have your long bio there, but have shorter options available, okay? Thank you, Aaron, for laughing at that. You people actually use the emoticons, it's great. <laughs> okay, so, um, ah, speaking of laughing, uh, when you write a bio, humor is not always a bad thing, okay? So this class that I was teaching at the academy, um, we were saying that I had a, we asked everybody to write their bios, right? And, you know, we sort of get these things of varying lengths and sort of saying, you know, this study was so-and-so, dad does, dad does, blah, 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 blah. So the thing I asked them after that was, I was asked them if they would, if they could all write a human bio. So a bio of who they are as people. You can mention music as being a part of that bio because obviously music is very much a part of who we are. But I want to hear like what you are as a person, you know, like, you know, like, how many siblings do you have? Uh, you know, where were you born and raised? Uh, what your hobbies were? You know, uh, what you know, what were you, what what things outside of music were you really really passionate about? You know, and um, it ended up being sort of like a it was one of the, like one of those things where it's like yeah just write a human bio because I just want to get to know it was more for me to get to, to, to get to know the class better, and what came out was actually fascinating. These bios were much more in depth. They're way more personable. Um, and I learned, I felt like I actually learned a lot more about uh, these students than, if, than from their official bio, which I mean, everyone, of course, they go online, they say, oh, how do people do a bio? Okay, I'm gonna write it like that, you know? So um, what I'm trying to do now is whenever I give, uh, whenever I provide a bio for somebody, I'm trying to keep something really personal about me in there. Okay, or something humorous or something like that, you know, like um, I used to have a geriatric pet newt, you know, and I mean, that may seem like that may seem like an odd detail to have, but I actually had that newt for 34 years. I forgot about him. He was I know. You know what? I was cleaning out the hard drive the other day. I found all these photos of him. I actually got very nostalgic. So he was very cute. He wasn't he didn't do much. He kind of just sat there. But um, but he sat there for 34 years. Um, and he was like, you know, to the point where I even had like, you know, Lord of the Newts at hotmail.com as one of my email addresses and things like that. So, um, so like, I, it, it was something that's sort, of, sort of like, you know, um, it, it was sort of like a, a, an odd little thing you could just sort of throw in there. I mean, there's also too, I think with comp as being composers, there is a certain brand that you may, that you want to project. And that brand is going to be connected with the kind of music that you, uh, the, the music you, you compose as well. But, you know, keeping something personal like that, it makes me... I remember the bios that do things like that. Okay, the bios that just sort of list the list the awards and 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 where you know where they went to school and things like that. I mean, I pay attention to, but like they're not the ones that stick with me. You know, the ones that sort of talk about, you know, their pets, 
uh, the marathon they ran last month, things like that. You know, like those are those are the things that sort of make me uh, want to know a person. And also, I think you know, I think when we work in the contemporary music community, it's very. I think we know each other to a certain degree, and I think we feel comfortable with each other, and we can be esoteric with each other and 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 get away with it. Um, I think when a lot of people are hearing new music for the first time, um, one, they're frightened, okay? So they, they are going to approach it, they, they, there's a high likelihood that they're going to be approaching it with the worst case scenario in mind, okay? So anything that you can do that can sort of humanize the experience for them is always a great thing, you know? So, you know, I they can say, I hated that performance, but I love the fact that they have a Shih Tzu. So, I'm kidding, but you know what I mean? Just uh, tossing something in there is always, uh, something like that is always good. Um, that said, try not to make it all, <laughs> all fluff either too. So anyways, um, yeah, actually, oh, that's, that's what I was, was going to say. I, I actually had an anecdote tied to this. I was recently working with a great composer, a really great Canadian composer, again, nameless to protect the innocent, but um, uh, it was one of those things where I was, I was stalking the person online. I was getting all the information and it was, it was just, we just, we're connecting and we were we were working together for the creation of a new piece and it was just sort of it was one of those things where you could see we were both trying we were really uh interested in working with one another but for some reason and because of the pandemic we never got a chance to meet in person it was all done on zoom and it was all done on facetime and things like this right and it was like this 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 and then one day i was like i had my my laptop i'm like this and they were mentioned it's like oh we've got a banana tree behind you i was like yeah and we talked about gardening for like two hours and like and the basis of that, like, and that was like three weeks in, you know, and, and like the, the, I feel like the process for this, whole, for that, for, for the development of that piece, it began that day when we talk, started talking about gardening. So, um, we just have a couple of quick questions about word length or um, bio length and word yeah. length if you just, when you have a Okay. No, go ahead. Oh, there, are they here? Uh, they're just in the chat. Uh, okay. Oh my God. There's all these messages. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys are chatty. Holy cow. Uh, do I suggest a workouts? I do. Um, I think what's been suggested here, 75, 150 and 300 is great. 75 is really short. Um, I would say, but yeah, yeah, it might be it might be worth having something something that short. I usually what I have is three uh, three fifty and or sorry one fifty and three hundred are, are usually the ones that I have, um, and I would say yeah having something shorter like about a hundred words I think is 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 good. With the understanding that people might edit them in addition to that. Two and fifty words is a pretty widely accepted length, but some people ask for hundred word bios. Yeah, I would say generally speaking, I would say hundred words is probably is 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 a, is a safe one to have on hand. Um, when I'm doing program notes and when I'm doing uh, CD liner notes as well, uh, I try to keep it to. Um, if you send me a hundred word bio, yeah, that's that's usually pretty good for CD liner notes. I'll probably chop it down, but that's sort of my job. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't worry too too much about that. Did he like flute? Oh, the newt? That was a newt, yes. Oh, yeah. I don't think so. It was a pretty ornery newt, actually. So, so I'll keep an eye on the chat. So, but yeah, I, I think having the having the having the having uh, something hundred words or less is great. I'd say, yeah, 200, 250 to three hundred words is good. And then if you want something longer, by all means just with the understanding that that's probably going to be for your website and people may not use it for, for print. Uh, any other questions so far? Okay. Um, I want to talk about photos just a little bit. So what we, I mentioned, we, I mentioned it a little bit earlier and how um, as composers, you can sort of, uh, you have some more artistic leeway in some ways uh, than, than some of us uh, do as performers. Um, there are certain expectations uh, for performers that, you know, our instrument has to be clear, you know, um, we have to be doing the thing lying on the piano keyboard or, you know, uh, conductors always have to have the baton ready and things like this. Yes, exactly. So um, there is, you can actually be quite a bit more creative, I think, as composers, um, because there is an element of mystery about what you do, 
you know, and because what you do is so individual and, you know, one's process, one person's process is going to be really different than another person's process. And so I think how you do that is um, there's going to be, um, there's a lot of flexibility there, I think. So one of the things that I was talking about in the, in the class I was teaching, uh, we actually invited someone, uh, uh, a classical music fashion consultant uh, for one of our classes. Liz Parker, she's based in Toronto. She's an incredible human being. She knows so much about classical music and how we present ourselves. And she knows that we're generally all pretty terrible at it because we haven't had a lot of, she, and she's, she's trained as a pianist herself. So she knows that most of the time we're actually busy practicing, you know, we're, we're composing or, and we don't really have uh, the time or the resources or the energy to really focus on, you know, what am I gonna wear and this sort of thing. So it was really nice to have her come in and sort of just talk about ver uh, uh, various things. One of the things that she really, really pushed that I actually kind of disagree with, and so don't you dare tell her uh, when you run into her, is uh, she said that we all should have professional photo uh, photos done of ourselves. And I think if you can afford that, that's fantastic. And she said one of the things you can actually do, and I think it's a great idea, is get professional photos done, but actually team up with somebody else, right? So like if there's two or three of you, you can sort of split the you can split the fee, and you can all get your photos done in one shoot. You'll have fewer photos to choose from, of course, but then uh, you're you're paying a, a fraction of the cost. Um, I personally think that iPhones being the way they are these days or phone cameras, they've come a long way. And I think that you can afford to uh, take, don't take selfies, okay? Like don't use selfies as your promotional material. Um, only because we can tell, you know? Like if it's if it's a certain distance from your face and like even if like, you know, you get the angle, we, we know when it's a selfie, okay? So, but it, I would say if you have a friend or a family member with a really good eye, um, and it's a nice day out and the lights and the lights really good, you know, uh, take them out and say, Hey, I'll buy you lunch. You know, if, if, if you can take my photos, um, I think it's, um, and I mean, obviously take a look at their work beforehand and see, is this something that, you know, that, that you can do. Um, she also had really interesting ideas about photo shoots as well. And this is something that never really occurred to me at the time. Um, she said, create, create a relaxed environment. So wherever you end up being, uh, if you do it outdoors, great. If you do it indoors, great. But she said she always has music playing. She always finds out what the first person's favorite music is, and they always have it playing in the background. Um, she'll have tea, or if it's later, you know, she'll have wine out and things like this. Things that just sort of help you relax and get in the mood of the whole thing. Because photo shoots, I don't know if you've done one, they are not natural, okay? And they have you contorted into these bizarre positions sometimes, and you're like, this can't possibly. Live. And you look at the, you look at the photo later, and it's like, oh, actually, that looks quite good. Um, but you know. Um, they aren't necessarily natural environments. So whatever you can do to sort of create a natural environment is great, you know? So, if, you know, if you turn into a tea party, you know, that's great. If you turn into a wine tasting, that's great. You know, have a bit of music playing in the background. I thought these were really fun. Uh, these were really fun ideas. Um, when you are going to be doing things like taking your own photos and, and stuff like this, this is an interesting tip, okay? So um, if you have your phone uh, ready, if you can just start do the thing where you're, you're you're having it facing yourself, okay? So you're taking it, looking looking yourself in it, okay? I want you to take the phone and I want you to look down like this at it, okay? And see yourself reflected back, okay? So this is how everyone sees you on a Zoom call, just so you know, okay? Generally speaking, I mean, I'm trying. I've I've raised mine up because to to avoid this, okay? Now I want you to take this and I want you to go like this. Gradually raise it up. So that now it's actually, so now it's actually above you, okay? So one, the light hits you better, okay? Two, things fall back in a, in a really, really lovely way, okay? So, and um, as, as you all get older, this is gonna become more of a, uh, more of a thing, trust me, okay? So um, this is a, like, so you always, like you want to, if, you, if you're gonna take photos and if you're gonna have photos taken of you, having them taken, taken from up here is always a really good thing. You know, you always see these photos of people like on the ground and like, you know, the photos like taken from a balcony looking down, they're all looking up. And it creates a, it's, it creates, it creates a, a great geometry, but it's also, um, it makes us look young and youthful. So take, take that and use it as you will. Okay. But that was a, sort of like, it was like one of those things where Liz made us do all this sort of thing. And we're all like going this, and we're, the whole class went, Oh, it was one of those moments. So, um, and as I said before, uh, 
you have you have more artistic leeway, right? So if you want to go for something that you know is grainy, if you want to go for something that's blurred or obscured, like this creates a sense of mystery. I think, okay, like it, when I see these with composers, it makes me want to learn more, you know. So you know, it, feel free to feel free to play with that, okay. And I think some of you have because uh, we're going to take a little bit of time um, to uh, to take a look at some uh, some of your uh, web presences. So. Um, I'm going to talk quickly about social media before we move on, though. Okay, so I imagine all of us are on social media in one way, shape, or form. I've, I used to live on Facebook. I was doing my doctoral thesis, and so like I don't think I wrote so much of my thesis so much as I wrote status updates on Facebook during that time. Um, and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poo-poo Facebook because Facebook probably got me through my thesis. Some could argue I, I could have probably finished my thesis in half the amount of time, but. Um, for me, it was like it was like because there was also a community of, of people out there who were either working on their theses as well, or had just finished the theses, and they can say you can do it, blah blah blah. Like those, it was actually it was a really good thing for me. I've taken I'm stepping back a little bit from Facebook these days because um, it's a lot of information out there, and I know we can change it. We can we can we can sort of like we can change uh, you know who we see more of and less of and things like that. But for me, I'm just sort of like, so I do most of my stuff on Instagram these days. I tweet a little bit. Um, I love the visual appeal of Instagram. I love the fact that there's uh, this, this uh, wonderful visual element that you have more control over. Um, and anyways, what I wanted to say was, some of this is gonna be super, super obvious, but it needs to be said anyways, okay? Um, when you are operating things like Facebook and Instagram, consider having a mixture of personal and professional, okay? One thing I noticed that is, um, if you get a professional musician and all they talk about is the next gig, I tend to switch off quite a bit. So, um, you know, like you wanna support somebody, um, you know, but at the same time, it's like, if, if it's just, you know, to, like the thing, We've all done it, okay? But the thing that I don't want to see anymore is, you know, today's view from the office, okay? Like, don't use those fucking words anymore, okay? That is so 2018, okay? So um, that said, I've done it, okay? Like, I've done it. I think I'll probably do it again, but just just know we've all heard it, okay? So, um, so but have a, like, it's, for me, it's always interesting uh, when I get into, a, get a glimpse of a composer's life outside of composing, you know, like, uh, do you like to cook? Uh, do you have a cat? Uh, I'm really into cat pictures these days. I don't know why. I think Jenna probably has something to do with it, actually. But, um, you know, do you live in an interesting part of the world? That's, an, that's a really cool thing, too. You know, I follow a flutist who, um, on Instagram, who I've, Zook Flute, I'd, I've never seen this person's face. I don't know anything about them, but they live in a gorgeous part of the world and they're posting pictures of these rolling hills and seascapes and it is just, it is so engaging. So, um, yeah, I tend to switch off when, the, when someone's feed is exclusively about their career. So, um, this is really obvious, okay, but you want to avoid anything that might potentially come back to haunt you, okay? Uh, drunk photos, okay? Um, Having photos, having uh, having photos where like you're having drinks with friends is is totally fine. Okay, you might want to check to see if every photo in your feed is a picture of you holding a glass of uh, of alcohol. Then you might want to do a little bit of editing. Okay, I might be speaking from personal experience. Okay, so just just putting it out there. Okay, um, yeah, and do be do be vigilant about when other people tag you. Okay, like. You know, if, if you don't want to be tagged in the photo, untag yourself, okay? Um, the other thing that I tend to notice is um, delete, feel free to delete any comments uh, that are on your feed or anything attached to you that you feel might be inappropriate, okay? I know there's a whole thing uh, saying, oh, you know, freedom of speech, I should be able to comment, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's true. They can, anyone can comment on their own feeds, okay, to be seen by others, but um, if they're posting it on yours and you think you, you, and it makes you uncomfortable, feel free to take it down. It's your space. You get to curate it. Okay. All right. Now with the remaining time, and if it's okay with you, I would like to do a little thing that I did last night. I took the six composers and what I did was I took your name and I took the word composer and I Googled it and I, and to see what came up. Okay. So, um, one of you, the first thing that came up when your person name, when the, when the name, when I put the name in was obituary. I can't remember who it was, but, um, 
anyways, but I, so, but it's going to be your name and composer. Okay. And what I would like to do is just have a little discussion about what can, like what's been done and what, what, and what can be done. Okay. So I am going to share my screen again. Wait a minute. Where did I go? Where'd you all go? Okay. I'm going to share the screen. Oh, there's the iguana again. Okay. We're going to move the iguana and we're going to start with Sasha. So Sasha, I put your uh, name in uh, followed by composer. And the first thing I got was your SoundCloud page. Now I am guessing that you don't have a website. Is that correct? Um, I have one, but I, for some reason, I guess it's because I didn't buy the domain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like some Wix site thing. I, I uh, okay. at some point, but it doesn't even show up when you Google it. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, look, this is not, this is not, <laughs> this is not a shaming session. Don't worry. Okay. So, um, but what I'm going to say is like, when I put it, when I put uh, your name and followed by composer in your, uh, your SoundCloud page is the first thing that pops up. And if it's not going to be your website, your SoundCloud page is the next best thing. Okay. And I also want to point out the SoundCloud page you've actually done is, is beautiful. Okay, so the photos are really colorful. They're really playful. Now, the only thing that I can see here is the the only problem is if you if your if your primary web presence is your SoundCloud page is when I'm going through this. So I'm going this from the I'm approaching this from the standpoint of I'm a flute player who plays contemporary music and I want to program and see I want to program this person's music and I want to see if they've written something for flute. Okay, that's like that's my default setting. Okay, so. Um, now I'm scrolling through this and you've got actually, you've got a lot of content on your SoundCloud page, which is fantastic. Include Quarantunes, which is really, uh, seems very cool. Now, the only thing is, I don't know what these are written for. I don't know uh, if it's for piano. Um, I don't know if it's for flute. I don't know if it's electronic music and things like this. And I have done this thing in the past where I'm so determined to find something for flute. I will go through and play every single one until I hear something that sounds like a flute. Okay. Now, not everyone is as patient as I am, though. So um, if you can have things on this page that like if you could just like say my pulse is uneven and then just have a little dash to say for blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like it's for voice and piano or for piano or for, you know, or electronics or something like that or just something in the brackets. The other thing I want to talk about is this section over here. I don't know if you can see my my. Uh, uh, my, my little cursor circling. This is an area where you can actually put biographical information and you can also put a link to a website. Okay. So if your, if your website isn't coming up in Google searches for whatever reason, you can put it here because your SoundCloud page does come up in a Google search. And if I see this and, and I see like, if I, there's a bit of biographical information about you followed by a website link, then I, I will instantly click on that. And I'll be taken to your page. But otherwise, I think, you know, there's so much to choose from here. There's, I think it's laid out really well. I love the fact that you're doing something called Quarantunes because it's with the times. Um, it shows that you're being active during a time when a lot of people are being inactive. And so I think this is really, really great. And I guess, and, and the, like the, the splash page up here with the flowers in, uh, in your eyes, I think is actually really gorgeous. So I think this is like, you know, this is really, uh, this is really great. The only thing I would say is, um, have have a link here uh, in, in the bio section so that we can we can actually click we can actually click on that and it'll take us to the web page. I am going to move along now. Oh, if I say anything and there's a question, just just please just chime in, okay? So I've got you all on this little file on the side, so I can't see everybody. So just turn your microphone on and shout at me. So this is Ashley. So when I Googled Ashley, the first thing that comes up is your Bandcamp page, uh, which is great, which is great. Um, and then what happens is here you, in your biographical information here, you also provide a link to your SoundCloud page. And that's really helpful too, I think. So again, so Ashley, I'm, uh, do you have a website? Is Ashley here? Do we lose her? Anyways, maybe not, but listen, so I, the thing is the SoundCloud page is great. We'll just click on that. And this is super clear, right? Like here we have, uh, the, all the pieces are being listed and Sorry, it actually gives you, you oh, hi, who's that? Ashley? 
Hello. Hi, yes, Ashley. Um, Sorry, I feel like we're sort of discussing you behind your back. I felt really bad. So. Well, that's okay. Um, I do have a website. I haven't. Uh, it's the same thing as Sasha, so we're free to name things. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, but so again, maybe something to consider is um, like putting the link in in uh, in your SoundCloud page if that's something you want to do. So. Um, but I think the SoundCloud page here is really, really well laid out because you have uh, you have a lot of material here, like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, compositions, and it's really, really clear about what the instrumentation is. You know, so for someone like me, it's really great to be able to uh, to scroll through this. I know exactly what I'm looking for and what I'm going to get. So, um, yeah, if and just having some sort of like it's interesting that um, that. Uh, a lot of the, some of you have web pages that are difficult to find, are difficult, are that Google is having a hard time uh, finding. But I think you know, if you do have a SoundCloud page, put the link in the bio. I think that's a, a, a very helpful thing to do. I will move on. Next up, we have Marie Alice Conrad. Okay, this is really gr so. The first thing that comes up is is is, is Marie's uh, is Marie's website. And this is really great because it comes up with the, the home page is a picture of her with mask on working inside a piano. So this is really great in a lot of ways. So first of all, whenever you're inside a piano, you are being very specific about what it is that you are doing. OK, like you are not you are not playing the piano. You are a composer who is exploring new sounds inside the piano. OK, so this tells me a ton of information in one in, in one photo. OK. Um, the mask, I actually think, is actually really cool. It's very current, okay. And so it, I look at this. I look at this right now, and I go, "This is somebody who keeps their website up to date, okay." Um, you know, this was this photo was taken in the last year. Uh, this is someone who is, you know, uh, who experiments with music uh, and who is, you know, and who is a composer. And it says right here, composer, arranger, teacher, pianist. Okay. Now I will say that. Um, I had to find the page, the tabs for your pages are so tiny up here. I didn't see them at first. And so I was down here trying to click on pianist and teacher and arranger, trying to see what would come up. And then I was trying to click on the picture and then I didn't get that. It, you know, nothing was like, nothing was working. I was like, oh, maybe it's just like, and then I literally didn't see these things up in the upper right uh, for the longest time. I was like, oh, it must be like a place, like a, like a, like a placeholder or something like that, you know, like, like a to be, and I was like, oh my God, it's all up here. So. That's a good, that's a good suggestion for sure. Just make it I, bigger. Oh, so um, this is great. Uh, the bio is really well, it's, 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 uh, it's beautifully written. You study with Emily LaBelle and um, great photo. The works page. <gasps> Please check back soon. Marie, you have one job. No, I'm kidding, but yeah, it, it's in the works, but no, no, I get goal, it. My goal for the summer for sure. Excellent. Excellent. So if we could get some content on this, it'd be fantastic. Um, otherwise, the other thing you can do is do you have a SoundCloud page? Just setting it up. So that's perfect. Works too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually just put the links in there. Okay. Something else you can do on a website is you can have like, just, you can put the little links, like the little direct links. You can have like little, like you'll have like the, uh, uh, the Instagram icon, the Facebook icon, the Twitter icon, and the SoundCloud icon. You know, you can have those. And I like, we know right away, it's like, oh, I want to listen to music. I can just click on that, you know? Right. So, yeah. Um, otherwise, this, yeah, this is a beautiful looking site. So it's like, we just need some content on the works page and then we're, we're laughing. So actually, one thing that Liz brought up, you know, uh, in, in Liz Parker, when we were talking about this, uh, she was like, now is the time to be creating your content. Right. So I think it's a little bit like it's not as if we're all sitting around doing nothing right now. I think we're all being very busy in, in, in different ways. But I think um, she's not wrong in the sense that if we're not going to be out there getting performances in, in the traditional sense, you know, this probably is it is a good time. And it's uh, also it might even be an urgent time to be getting our, our, our web presence de uh, developed in a way that so that we're just easy. We're, it's easy to find what we're doing. You know, and it's easy to uh, to have us connected with other, with other people. So, I'm going to move on now. Uh, Palace, is that how do I pronounce your name? 
It's Palace. Palace. Okay, thanks. Um, can we? Can we? Do you have a website? No. Okay. No, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, there is. Um, well, there, th this was a bit of a tough thing. So like uh, what comes up is uh, some information that you had uh, with the Ensemble Contemporary de Montréal, uh, which is great. What I did notice actually, Palace, was how much you're featured in other people's feeds, which is really, really great. So um, I would say, I, I think, you know, I think if, and I don't know if this is if, if this comes down to an issue of privacy, and if if it is, and then that's perfectly perfectly fine. Um, as somebody who uh, wants to play new music and wants to sort of explore new voices, and and someone who wants to uh, find out what new narratives are, and and, and what 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 composers are doing these days, um, having something like a like a SoundCloud page is uh, is is I think a really good start. So. Um, it's just maybe something something to consider, and um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a web page, but so, something on SoundCloud, something on SoundCloud where we can sort of uh, hear uh, hear hear what's uh, hear what you're doing is is, is fantastic. Um, another thing to actually uh, to, to also consider for people is people are going to YouTube more often now. I mean, this year we've seen this glut of online content, obviously, but. Um, uh, one of the things that I've been really enjoying are the the score videos. So, because I get to go through this, I like I get to hear the piece, which is awesome. But I also get to follow along in the music, and I can sort of see, oh, you know, is this appropriate for me? You know, can I can I learn this in X amount of time? Uh, is, is this good for one of my students? This sort of thing, you know, like the, uh, that's really it's uh, being able to see the score and in that sort of scrolling fashion is really really valuable. So, um, so. Consider something like uh, I was I considered like a SoundCloud page is great because you can hear it. Uh, YouTube page, is, if you have something like that, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be of live performances. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know your face, you know a series of stills of your face, but it can be the, like the score is a great uh, great way of, of showing people what you're doing. So, uh, so so yeah, just something it's just something to consider, Palace. So, um, Maria. No, first of all, um, the, your website is the second thing that comes up. Uh, the first thing was your page on the website for uh, Canadian women, uh, Canadian women composers. Um, both are great. Okay. Um, now, Maria wears many hats. She is an arts administrator. She is a performer. She is a singer, and she's a composer. Okay. And I think what's interesting is, um, I think a lot of us are like this. A lot of us do wear a lot of different hats. Um, this is. For the most part, it is actually a really, really well laid out, uh, and she has a blog that she keeps up to date, which is fantastic. Okay, so the last time uh, she posted was January, which I think by by website standards is actually really, really good, and I think it's great because you're actually keeping us up to date about what you're doing during the pandemic. I think this is really fun. So, um, for the page, now. This is, I think, one of those examples. If you go to the about page here, remember the Lara St. John one where the about page and we got all this whole sort of list of things, right? Now you've got, this is, this is really, really great because you have your artistic bio, you have your avant-garde composer, film composer, music teacher, conductor and vocalist, arts administrator, and then a group that you play on the Omni Temporum duo, okay? Now, I think having all this information is really, really important. Um, it might do to have them consolidated slightly okay so i mean nothing crazy but just sort of like if you can just sort of like if you can just tuck this in like if it's possible to sort of combine the composer bios together so like avant-garde composer and film composer um and like for music teacher i think that's great it might be interesting to have like if it's the, the music teacher bio here actually i'm just gonna click on it because i didn't click on it before um I think this is great because it actually explains who, like you know, what what your teaching uh, method is and 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 um, what your expectations are of students and things like that. If I'm not wrong, so it might be interesting to have that page up here, so that when prospective students come, they can actually see oh, music teacher, and they can click right on that, you know, and then you can be a little more specific about it there. Um, and yeah, I mean, like it's these are all wonderful things that uh, that that are being mentioned if, if it's possible to sort of consolidate them into 
like I would say if, if, if you if it's possible to consolidate all the, all the composer ones into a single one that might be good okay um, an artistic bio and like sort of like like the artistic bio is is it like a oh it's, it's okay so it's it's this is your biography yes it's usually the biography that I send around but uh, I could update it a little bit <laughs> Oh, great. Yes. And yeah, I think it's, it might be worth considering like creating a, a biography that combines the artistic bio and then the, the, the composer bios all together. So, yeah. and then sort of having it's, you know, what is actually a really good page to look at is uh, Dinuk uh, Widjaratni's page. Um, okay. Because he's somebody who is very active as a performer. He's somebody who's actually very active as an educator and a composer. And also he does something called creative counseling. Right. And so um, he and the way his website is and again, so it's a lot of information that's, that's actually on, on, on his website, but it's divvied up in a way that I think is actually uh, is, is very is, is very effective and very, uh, very straightforward. So oh, you just mentioned that um, a work with me tab could be something that would be good to incorporate. Totally. But yeah. Great site. So, uh, and then we have Holly. Hello. Hi there. Okay. I just want to take a moment to talk about how beautiful this image is. Okay. So, and this is, again, this is something that sort of like it summarizes a lot of different things at once. Okay. So, um, Holly, you do you do a lot of graphic scores, is that right? Correct. Yes. And and you and you're a visual artist as well. Yeah, I would say. Okay. And so, did you do this other half of the of of, of the? Yeah, of the I actually designed this as my graduation, my performance graduation recital poster, and then that got canceled. And so I was like, I'm gonna use this for my website. This is stunning. Like this, it leaps off the page. Like. This image was blazing into my head like long after that I long after I saw it. Okay, like it is it, it is almost iconic. Okay, so it describes you as being creative. It describes your interest in graphic scores. It describes your interest in visual art, and it also describes you as a clarinetist. So, like, there's a lot of information in here that's being done that's being handled really, really beautifully. Thank you. I did it because I didn't like that, how the second half of my face looked. My eye was a little bit closed, so that's what I did. <laughs> you do not need to reveal your beauty secrets. That was a joke, but, you know, anyways. Uh, no, no, this is all fantastic. It's fantastic, fantastic. So, um, and then you scroll down and you get an idea of, you know, what, what, uh, what your interests are. I will say that having the multiple backgrounds here, it, it, visually it's a little bit distracting. Um, and then it sort of bleeds in with the, vi with the videos that you have here as well. But then the other, the flip side of that is because you do do a lot of graphic notation and you do have interest in the visual arts, it makes sense in the context. Um, I'm gonna be slightly picky here if you don't mind. Um, the, the biography here, uh, just a second here. I'm going to move around. <laughs> Holly is most comfortable in the intersection of many different artistic practices. Has been praised for her unique visual style. Oh wait, I'm going to go up to your to your bio here. Okay. Okay. So this bio here. So now you have the image. Uh, you have the image coming up again, right? Which mm -hmm. I think is fine, except that when you scroll a little bit further down, you have this other fantastic photo of you here, right? Here with the lighting and like, this is great. Okay. And because this is actually like, it's this actually your, your entire face, we get a sort of a, a humanized uh, idea of who you are, right? My personal preference, and this is just, a, it is a personal preference. My personal preference would be because this, we're not going to be forgetting this image anytime soon. Do you know what I mean? So I could, you could almost remove this image and just have being this being the first thing that pops up on your biography page, because what we have is the, on, on your, on your, on your homepage, we have this iconic image, right? Of somebody who's like, you know, pretty badass actually, right? And then you have this here where it's still pretty badass. You've got this electronica behind you. You've got this like really, really interesting lighting here, um, but it's a slightly more human, uh, a slightly more human presentation when you're talking about your biography. It's just a thought, you know? Oh, I it's, totally see what you're saying. I agree. And because the other thing that you have here is you have the image 
Um, can I find it here? Actually here, listen and watch. Like you have it here as a banner, right? And I think this is a great idea. If you were actually considering having this as your banner on every single page, then we have that reminder of that image, but you also have, you have space to, uh, to put in uh, like other photos or more material and things like that. I love that you have the banner here and you have the banner here in the events page, which is empty. I'm just gonna point out. So, um, but like, I love this idea of the banner. Okay, so that way we still get it. We still get the reminder um, and, but we, can, we have room for other content. And then I would say, yeah, like your works page is really great because you have listen and watch. Uh, you have you have listen and, you have options to listen and to watch. Uh, you've got to divvy it up by genre, which is great. Just be a little bit careful because you do double up information on your listen and watch page. So the works there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of shared uh, material in your listen and watch page, and the works page, and your home page. You know what I mean? So. I'm not sure exactly how. Um, I well, I did want to put everything, like any time there was an option to listen to a piece I've written, mm -hmm. it's in the works. Um, but I do think I have the same YouTube links on the homepage and this page. Um, so maybe I can. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I mean, or I think what, what you can do is like, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the work, like in the works page, I'll take like the title of the work and it'll, I'll make that a hyperlink to the YouTube page, you know? Um, and that way you manage to have, you still have like an uninterrupted list, but you have the option of, of going to, um, you have the option of, of listening or watching uh, to, to the YouTube page. But I mean, these are, these are sort of small, these are, these are small things because um, this is really fun because you've got your, you've got your, uh, you got your SoundCloud page here. You've got your YouTube page here. Uh, there's all the visual appeal. So yeah, this is really, uh, this is really, really fun. And yeah, this, this image is just, I mean, it is baller. Like it's fantastic. So. Did I get everyone? Is Ramsey, Ramsey, are you one of the people here? Uh, no. No? Okay. Um, uh, no. <laughs> okay. So, I'm just, I'm just here to, to, to be here. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. So, um, Hi. Welcome. <laughs> so are there any questions? So I'll just stop, I'll stop the share here. I hope you don't mind uh, that, that, that I went through, that we went through each of you. I think that I found that I mean, it was really interesting for me to be able to do that. Uh, and like learning about new composers is one of the most exciting things I do as a flutist. So it was actually really great to be able to, to be in a position to do that. So, so thank you and for, uh, thank you for allowing me to share, to share that. Yeah, if I could re reiterate uh, what uh, <laughs> everything Mark said, um, but as uh, you know, as a conductor and I'm constantly um, you know, whenever I come across um, a composer's a composer's name, or um, you know, I hear something interesting, I have a little book that I write down, um, and then I come home and I Google it. And I can't tell you how many times I've been like tragically disappointed that I haven't been able to find, you know, any info on a composer that I found interesting, or haven't been able to listen to their works, or or get in touch with them in any way. Um, so uh, yeah, if I could reiterate, just having yeah, uh, your works uh, listed as uh, clearly as possible and with sound links as possible, even if it's to a uh, just a MIDI file. Um, that's I mean I listen to a lot of MIDI's and you can get a lot from a MIDI. Um, so uh, yeah, just uh, that that would be my that that's one of my biggest frustrations in <laughs> trying to program good stuff. <laughs> Well, if there are no other questions, shall we call it a day? We can call it. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Oh, question for Jana. Well, oh, from Aileen. Oh, Hi, Aileen. Question for Jana. Will there be another mentorship opportunity next year? That's a great question. I am currently fundraising. It took me three years to raise money for this one. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm really hoping, and if, it, if not next year, it'll be definitely the year after. Uh, we should be able to be in a place. So, you know, um, 
uh so uh you know cross your fingers and pray to the grant gods with me <laughs> i think yeah well if i could just sort of say i think this is tremendous work that, that you've been doing jana and i've always i mean i've been a big fan of jana's for a long time and i've been a big fan of allegra so um it's a real it's a real treat to be able to be involved in some way oh thanks mark and thanks so much for sharing your great info this was fantastic and i think this was a, a missing piece that we uh, that we needed um, kind of to round out our workshop. So thank you so much. And uh, if people uh, want to get in touch with you and maybe get some coaching on some of the, maybe perhaps some of the things that uh, you mentioned, is that a possibility? I can. Uh, I yeah, can... yeah. Here, I'll just. Uh, here's my email. Did I get it? There, marktmcgregor@gmail.com. So, Perfect. And I'll also, yeah. I'll send that in the, um, the replay email with this video link. So really awesome. Thanks everyone for, uh, yeah, for your great questions and participation and, uh, you know, having, yeah, having your, your online presence there so that we can, uh, all learn, uh, together. And, uh, once again, yeah, thank you so much to Mark. Much appreciation. Thanks. I'm going to be doing a lot of listening to all of you in the next few days. So yeah, there's some Mark. great, great works coming. <laughs> All right, and thanks to everyone for, uh, yeah, for attending these workshops. Take care, everyone. Until next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.